Home Assistant 2026.1 is here, the January release of a brand new year. Happy New Year to you, by the way. And this month we have changes to the automation editor, navigation improvements to the dashboard, better navigation of protocols, and a small but welcome change to the energy dashboard. Now, it's worth mentioning that this is a smaller release this month, with it having been the Christmas period for many people who were having a well-earned rest, but still some good stuff to enjoy. First up, the automation editor continues to improve in this release, with more entity types coming to the new trigger and condition types. If you remember in December's release, the team added a new way of picking triggers and conditions in automations, designed to make it easier to create automations without needing to know about like state changes, entities or anything like that. In this release, that's expanded even more to add more entity types by default, which if you remember was one of my issues last month. Adding triggers for buttons, climate, device trackers, humidifiers, lights, locks, scenes, sirens and updates. Do remember that these are a labs feature, which means if you want to try it out, you will need to head over to settings, system and labs, and then enable the purpose specific triggers feature for this to show up. Then in an automation, you can add a trigger. And then if we pick a device like the Everything Presence Pro, it can now do triggers based on occupancy. And you can see all five of its occupancy based entities listed here so that we know which one we are targeting. And you can also change things like the behavior using the options down here too. This is a very nice change for new users who may find the concept of states and entities confusing. Next, we have a sprinkling of UI changes throughout this release. The first one is over on the new dashboard, which has improved the usage on mobile with better navigation. In previous versions on the new home dashboard, when you were on mobile, you would have these tab buttons down at the bottom for home and for you, which would display summaries, uh, favorites, and other types of cards. But now instead of having the tab navigations in 2026.1, these have been redesigned to keep everything on a single page and reduce the number of taps with the summary card moved up to the top, followed by favorites and then areas underneath. While we are on the home dashboard, another change here is the addition of this tile called devices. And this basically contains all of your devices and entities that have not yet been assigned to any area and it aims to help you find devices right from your dashboard without having to go searching through settings. And this is an easier way to allow you to go in and assign an area to a device. Next, the settings page has been redesigned a little bit with different sections, and that's because protocols are now getting easier to navigate to in this release. Whichever protocols you are using in Home Assistant, like Z-Wave, Zigbee, Thread, Matter, and others, are gonna show up right here in the settings page, which allows you to tap them directly from the settings and then add a device very easily, which I do think is really cool and makes complete sense. It also allows you to go in and change settings uh, for those different protocols if needed. Finally, for the last little UI change, you can now head over to the energy dashboard and pick the date and time from the bottom of the screen rather than having to keep scrolling up and down anytime you wanted to view different graphs with different time periods, for example, if you're comparing different times. Nice. Finally, for the big stuff, ESB Home now supports action responses, which look to be a pretty powerful feature and basically allows ESP Home devices to send structured data back to Home Assistant in response to actions, which would then allow you to do things in automations or in templates, I guess. I can think of some pretty great potential use cases for this feature already, so looking forward to investigating all the new possibilities with that. As for little things, firstly, there is a new unit of measurement of gallons per day for you freedom unit lovers. The Smart Things integration gets a whole bunch of new sensors for air quality and kitchen appliances. Matter speakers now support volume control. The OpenAI integration now supports the new GPT 5.2 models. And finally, the KNX UI 
now supports lots of new entities to help with setup. As for new integrations this month, there are eight new integrations added in this release, including one for eGage, which is an energy monitoring solution, and Homelink, which lets you trigger routines from supported vehicle, which looks pretty cool. We also see two integrations moved over from YAML into the UI. As for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, we have a nice small list this month with just a handful of changes, all of which to look to be pretty minor, but please do have a read of the breaking changes for yourself before updating to make sure nothing applies to you. And that's about it for this release, a nice small one this month over the festive period, but some good stuff nonetheless. Good to see the automation editor improving again in 2026.1, and I'm sure we're gonna see much more improvements coming over the year two in that department, along with loads of other things as always. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.